It's a very good day today because I'm doing something which I haven't done in a while. I'm going car spotting and I haven't had enough time to go car spotting in a while. So now that I've got a few hours this afternoon, I figured why not go down and go spotting. So I thought I'd walk you through a few essentials that I take when I go car spotting. First of all, very important, you need yourself a pair of sunglasses because around here it is absolutely gorgeous weather so you need some sunglasses you need sun cream I've got that on comfortable pair of shoes I've got those here Zara 15 euros shoes but they're brilliant for car spotting and then all important cap again to avoid <laughs> your sunburn and if you can get it all camouflaged so then the supercar owners can't even see the car spotters and you can hide and be camouflaged in the bushes that was a shitty joke Next thing you need is a camera, so I'm going to switch to my phone in the light here. This is what I've been filming on. This is the Canon G7X Mark II, but let's switch back to the camera. You don't really need to have a camera like this. So this one is, is a few hundred quid, but you don't need a, a fancy camera. What you need is basically just something which you can film. That could be your phone, it could be an iPod Touch, it could be anything. Literally, I started filming on an iPod Touch. Paul, Superguys of London, he was on his phone. Equipment you have, the camera is not the most important thing in the world. The, the most important thing is the knowledge of where to spot, how to car spot, and what you're gonna see. It doesn't really matter. If you're filming videos, that is. Of course, for photos, the better the camera, the better the photos will come out, but for videoing, it's more about the content. So if you want to be like a car vlogger type vibe, then the camera doesn't really matter. The Canon, the G7X Mark II is, is sort of like the baseline, really good one. It's easy to carry around. And I've got it on some sort of little stand thing because that makes it easier to film. Hey, hell. You need a basically fully charged phone for when you inevitably get lost. I'm all kitted up, sunglasses, everything's on. I'm going to talk to you about car spotting in Monaco because that's the only place I've really ever been car spotting. So I can't really talk to you about London or Paris or any places like that. But in Monaco, having a car is really not essential at all. You basically, as long as you can get yourself into Monaco by train, by bus or by car, whatever you may be doing, then that's the most important. Then you can walk around. It's so tiny you can walk around. But if you were to have a car, none of these are what you need to take. This is the ultimate car spotting car for around Monaco. The Renault Twizy. You can park it absolutely anywhere. You can follow cars and film them without having any engine noise because it's electric. Side note, side note, I'm sorry. It's just I've just remembered. I forgot to say this and I thought it might be relevant. If ever you are coming to Monaco to go car spotting, there's a place in, in Nice, which is about 25 minutes away from Monaco, where you can rent a Twizy. So if you don't want to walk around and you want to have a Twizy to spin around Monaco to go car spotting, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's 28 euros to rent Twizy and all you have to be is 19 years old and have a driving license. I think it's called Green Rent or something. It's on the port in, in Nice. But anyways, side note, if ever you want a Twizy like the one I was just showing to be able to go car spotting. Back to the video. This is not ideal because it's too low, you can't go anywhere. Too big to park, just for every reason it's completely wrong. Just yeah, quite big as well. So Twizy it is today. And there's one last thing which is quite important too. And that is a friend. If you're going car spotting, it is important not essential, but important if you can to have someone with you. Because then you can compare notes about how many 458s you've seen in the last month and talk about how incredible the new Project One looks together and all that jazz. Here's my friend of choice today. Wow. Hello, Sam. How are you? Fancy seeing you here. You ready to do some car spotting? I'm ready to do it. What a beauty! What a flashback! Look, yeah, what a flashback! It's you back in a 4C. Look it at does this. Feel like 2015. It does, but look, carbon, so carbon. Nice. Oh, wow, look at this. Anyways, I have a surprise for you because you know how Monaco, car spotting, a big part of it is uh, car parks? Yeah. Check this out. A Rolls Royce, Wraith, a Ferrari, an old Ferrari. Do you know which one this is? Uh, 330, 335, 335, uh, anyways, some old Ferrari. You got someone behind you as well. Flipping F40, Countach, and if I zoom in, all the way over there. Zooming. Yes, there is a Mustang. There's an old Mustang, but then also flipping Carrera GT. These are all owned by a friend of ours, though. His Instagram, I'm going to pop up now. And he has all of these cars. He's a car dealer, but spotting in Monaco, a massive part of it is car parks. So I we're think Googling. It's 330, isn't it? It looks like that. Yeah, it look, what is it? Look, what is it? I look, what is it? 330 GTC. 330 GTC. We, will it be written yeah, on the back? It be on the back. I'll go check. Oh, that is so nice, that a 40. 330. It is a 330. Uh, on you in my life. Yep, it's a 330. Nailed it. Nailed it. There's the Carrera GT as we drive out of the car park. This 4C sounds amazing. It's got the sports exhaust. This 
is the Formula One start finish straight. A good place to start in Monaco. We've got a little DB11 chilling right there. FF. And there it is. Probably the holy grail for car spotters. The Monaco Casino Square. We have an all blacked out Wraith. Looking rather marvellous. A 911. Ventega. Normally that's filled with supercars, but today that doesn't seem to be much at all. Approaching another popular car spotter hangout. Monaco Fairmont Corner where you see cars coming up and going down from Casino Square. So if you want photos on the move, this is the place to do it. we got a Maserati Levante right there. But yeah, you can wait up there or around the actual corner and you'll get sick photos of the cars. I actually recommend waiting up here because then you'll get them coming around this part of the corner and get some overhead shots. Once you go around the corner though, you can wait then here at this little bit on this roundabout, which is the Cipriani roundabout. One of my favorites because you see all cars going up and down from Fairmont coming out of the tunnel and going towards all the nightclubs down the strip here. This right here is basically Supercar Dealership Boulevard. There are car dealerships everywhere. So here we've got Mercedes, AMG, and McLaren. A tiny bit further off behind these red awnings, there is Rolls Royce, where often you'll get some cool, funky specced Rolls. Royces, and then we've got Ferrari right here. There's Ferrari, we got a 488. And you know what, it's actually probably simpler if, oh, I got a Bentley behind me. Don't know if you can see that, Bentley Continental GT. It's probably simpler if I just, oh, you guys just missed it. GTC for Lusso just went past. It's probably simpler if I just uh, walk you through with a map, with Sam, the hotspots of Monaco, because uh, driving around now is quite hard to talk to you about it. So, lunch. Oh yeah. So you've come down to Monaco, you've got your cap, you've got your sunglasses, you've got your sun cream on, you're ready to go, you've eaten, what do you need next? Now, you need to know your way around the place that you're, you're car spotting in. So in this case, Monaco. We found a map here, slightly loud, but what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide Monaco into four sections for you and then rate them differently depending on what it is. So we're gonna start on the west coast of Monaco, down here. This is Fulvier. Very residential area, but very, very wealthy. This is where all the expensive houses are. And if you're going car park spotting, Fulvier could be the place where you've got hypercars galore in the car parks around here. However, for walking around the streets and seeing cars, this place is usually quite dead because what they do is they'll drive out of here to go to the other places. You then move on to the port. Me again, and yeah, I know that noise. So annoying. So frustrating, couldn't really hear it that much in real life, but for some reason the cameras picked it up. So, sorry, you're gonna have to bear with, but yeah, sucks, I know. This gets lively during certain seasons. So Monaco Grand Prix, for example, completely, this is the place to be. But you won't get many park ups. This will be cars passing. So if you're looking for moving shots, Monaco Port could be the place to go. If you're looking for, for cars that are parked, you will want to look here, which is sort of in the middle. And here, in this section, you have Casino Square, and the Fairmont Corner and Fairmont Hotel. And this is where a lot of sick cars will park up. And probably, I would say, one of the hot spots with daytime car spotting. Um, you can just go here, stay at Casino, and that's where most of the cars will drive past to show off. Where we are now, which is right here, is the last section all the way east of Monaco, a place called La Votto. And around La Votto is where you'll get sort of the central hub, you'll have all the fancy restaurants, all the nightclubs, and this is where a lot of cars will come out late at night. So daytime, you'll get them driving around here, but nighttime, this is where they'll park. So I'd say, if you're in Monaco and it's your first time in Monaco, I'd hang out more on the east coast of Monaco, hang out around Casino during the day, La Votto at nighttime. Now, you're all ready, you need to then differentiate which kind of cars you're looking for. Are you looking for supercars or hypercars? Because hypercars, you're potentially better off searching for them specifically in car parks, whereas supercars, the best thing to do, 458s, uh, Specialis, things like that, is to look around the streets. Whereas hypercars, Veyrons, Koenigseggs, Paganis, they come out much, much more readily. So you need to do your research before you go out. You need to search for them in car parks. So what we're gonna do is a bit of daytime walking around car spotting now. So we're looking more for supercars. The annoying thing about Monaco is they do a lot of construction. So often for videos, you get all of this noise in the background, which you just got next to the map. Where do you fancy going? I reckon this way. This I way, down place. Supercar Dealership Boulevard, oh, as we can call it. What? is one piece of advice you'd give to an aspiring car spotter. <laughs> Sam, give it to us. Uh, patience. Patience is the biggest, especially in Monaco. Uh, you could come like, right now we're walking around, we're not really seeing much. But if you really wanted to make a proper car spotting vlog, 
or get some photos you just got to sit around because stuff will come out and also you might see a p1 gtr and miss it and not get the content wait it will come back it yes will come back. absolutely i'm exhausted from holding the camera say. way up here you're <laughs> so bloody amazing. tall you're walking around like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> look just as you've ended that Hello. we're at the ferrari dealership we got what an ff we got an f12 a 488 a few other cars a luso inside and a dawn out here these you'll see a lot of around monaco yeah. rolls there's the rolls royce dealership here but little tip i highly recommend walking past this restaurant because they often have really good breadsticks on the tables which you can <laughs> snap up as you walk past another rolls we're getting somewhere now well it seems like it's quite dead around monaco we have however found a fake 308 gts which if you look closely is painted and some sort of sculpture with uh, this thing next to it but uh yeah that's what uh, that's what car spotting's like today isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's not going great <laughs> monaco is probably one of the most unpredictable cities for car spotting like for all we know lewis could pop out in his zonda he's in singapore i know i checked oh <laughs> <laughs> i made a big deal out of uh, shoes for car spotting you need comfortable shoes so what have you gone for walk us through your decision uh i've gone for adidas brand deal <laughs> don't know the name i should Damn. good Quip, choice quick check <laughs> what do they call them? Sneakerhead. Uh, Are you a sneakerhead? No, I like them, but I don't know the names of any of them. It's oh, there was a Cayman S behind you. You missed it. What is this thing? Some sort of motorbike with a. It's full carbon. And then there's like a flurry of 570 S's here. So we've got 570 GT, 570 S back there, and then 570 S Spider, and another 570 S in white in the back around there. You know they're still for sale. Maserati Gran Turismo S's. They just did a facelift. They just did a facelift. Oh, this is a I swear, facelift. since I've been car spotting, this car has been on the road. It sounds good. Shitty gearbox, though. Six or something. They came out. 2008. There you go. So nine years they have been hitting the road. Still looks good, though. Training your ear is also Ooh, a crucial yes. part of car spotting. If you can distinguish cars just throughout the. Oh, Aston Martin dealer, by the way, right here. Uh, and Bentley. But anyways, if you could train your ear to recognize cars from a distance, that is so important. If you're doing spotting only videos, I would say a long zoom is helpful. A long zoom is helpful, but you also- don't have to do expensive, but a long zoom. A long zoom and a camera which switches on quickly. Yes. So that if a car comes around the corner, you can just whack it on and get recording straight away. Whack it on. Yeah, you That's know. what you want to do, just whack it on. Monaco local, he's been around for many years. Approaching one of the hotspots, Fairmont Monte Carlo Hotel. Let's see if anything's here. There so is absolutely oh, nothing. Oh, oh, that is nice, isn't that? Oh, look at the, oh, wow. V12 Vantage S, did you see the front completely ruined? Sorry? Did you see the front of it? No. Completely ruined. No way. Yeah, he's clearly banged the front. Oh, wow. Feather. Ooh, girl at the wheel. So as we said, <laughs> patience seems to be the way forward. We walked up to Casino Square I was like, and there's I, something I was special. I was like, oh, there's a crowd there. I wonder what that's Yeah, be. something pretty special. It's a flipping Laffa Perta. This is what spotting is all about. We've seen one hypercar now, carbon roof. You can tell it's the Aperta because the mirrors are slightly lower. This one does not have the stripes though, but it's got all the carbon, carbon around front, carbon over there, carbon roof and carbon around the back. Beautiful color. You can also tell because it's got this little black stripe with the inlet right there. Uh, that tells you that it's an Aperta. French plates, pretty wild, right? <laughs> now that Mr. Patience has, uh, has seen a lot. My reward has been reaped. Yeah, if that makes <laughs> exactly. Sense, yeah. So he's off, good to see you. Dude. Thanks for joining the Thank vlog. Thanks for giving it. us a tour. See you soon. See you soon, dude. Ciao, ciao. Carbon roof on the Aperta, which you can see there, is not usually on it and it looks really cool so it's a cool option to be able to have the carbon roof on this specific one i really like the spec it's actually similar to james's mr jww speciale used to have the color very very nice with the yellow pinstripe on the seats inside super cool this guy does not care he's leaning on the car and he's getting in trouble i feel like after seeing that i'm gonna follow sam's lead and uh, we've pretty much completed spotting today and what i want to do more now because it feels so good being back to these old school vlogs and uh Look who it is. What a coincidence. I can hear you coming. Hello, all right, have fun in the hills. Bye bye. Similar roof line to on the Lapa Perto on that. Anyways, I was saying, feels so good to be back to these sort of more old school vlogs. And what I'm going to try doing more is answer your comments. So I'm going to rush home now.
because I posted a video to answer a bunch of your comments on the video. So if ever I post, please feel free to comment and I'm basically reading every single comment. And yeah, back to the car. Look at that, 100% yeah! That is what we like to see, 100% charge on the Twizy. Beautiful day like this, awesome day car spotting. I hope you enjoyed the guide and learned a few things. Uh, it was really good fun having a few hours out car spotting. Unfortunately, not the most busy day, but still, Laugh a perter, not bad at all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned some stuff, and I'll see you soon. I'm really enjoying being back with videos. Ciao, ciao.